who is in your head. Hey, what's up? What is up? Welcome to the Pantry Podcast, where we serve up Jesus, not junk food, so that you can increase your spiritual nutrition. <laughs> Increase your spiritual nutrition. I think that everybody's gone through a point in their life where they're like, I can't take no more. Like, <laughs> Wait, we, no more spiritual nutrition or no more junk food? No more junk food. Okay. Because okay. I mean, I'm right. already there. <laughs> I'm already in that moment in my life where I'm like, oh, sometimes the things that hit you just like more seriously. Right. And then the voices come in. Yeah. And it's like, what is going on? And you got like, okay, you know, it's a misrepresentation. I'm not going <laughs> completely biblical on this one. I'm going more television <laughs> where you got the little white angel and the little black angel. And man, the black angel be beating the white angel out and taking over. And then life is miserable. Yeah. And I think that's where we're at today. Like, who are we listening to? Yeah. I mean, what are we consuming? What are we taking in nutritionally? Yeah. To get through our day. Yeah. I. That's one of the big questions that you need to ask yourself when you're having a tough time. When you know the Lord already, even if you're new to the faith or not, that is one of the best first questions you can ask. Who's in my head? What voices am I listening to? Because the voices that you let in, you're letting them in for a reason. If you straight up did not believe them and thought they were talking nonsense, you would have dismissed them, but you let them come in and you're letting them either build you up or poison the well, mm. one of the two. Mm. And so it's good to ask that question. And one of the things that happens when you accept the wrong ones is you start believing lies. Right. And it made me think when you go to the pantry, now we just attempted to brine some <laughs> unripe green tomatoes because what, what do you do with them before you have a frost coming, right? What do you do with all the tomatoes that are just not going to make it to red in time? And I found this recipe. And so, you know, you put in a lot of work up front and then you sit it in there and you wait seven days for it to brine. And then you pull them out and you pop them in your mouth. So excited. This is like such an exciting time. And it tastes. Interesting. Like it's poison. <laughs> you, you're like, was I safe? Like, should I swallow this? I don't know. And so there's something that it went, as I was sitting there eating those mere minutes before we recorded those, this. You ate one. I ate one. I you ate, ate four. Okay. so so. <laughs> but as I'm sitting there thinking about that, I was like, there have been times where just because it's there, I keep eating it. And Shay, <laughs> bless his heart, was trying to redeem him by adding salt and this and this. So he kept popping them in his mouth. But when you're listening to bad voices sometimes just because they're there mm. you keep letting them in you keep consuming that thing that tastes like poison maybe to the point that you justify that it's salvageable or that it's not poison or that it's worth it or that hey it's something when really you should step away in the vast majority of cases and go find alternative food source and right? i'm gonna carry that analogy because Please i'm do. the one who was doing it yeah and i'm sitting there in my own right right yeah i'm a chef i cook all the time i make things taste good and so i'm like all right let me eat another one wait hold on that didn't taste so good wait is it the limit is it this is it that is it this i'm putting my finger in the sauce <laughs> I'm trying he's to figure this out. really engrossing like, himself <laughs> in this experience and i take the ones that you're just starting in the fridge yes. or just seven days in that haven't had all the nice little oils and vinegars in it and i'm like well is it really the tomato still not good and then i'm like let me put some salt <laughs> This man was trying everything, doctor up. Isn't that this. what we do, though? And that's that's what we it, do. And it carries. And so let me tell you, the more I ate, the worse it tasted. Yes. Like sometimes I sit there. <laughs> I find myself doing it sometimes, but I'm like, okay, what would it take for what was just said to me to be true? And that's kind <laughs> right, of the same thing right. as what would it take to make these this big brine failure better? And maybe in the kitchen you can justify sprucing it up maybe there's a salvageableness to the recipe okay but when it comes to the words the mm. precious words coming into you and your spirit and ministering to you there are evil spirits that minister oh, yeah. evil and there are good spirits that minister good right. and humanity has that mirror you know where there are people who are going to speak life and there are people who are going to speak death 
doesn't necessarily guarantee if you're just speaking to any old Christian, it doesn't even guarantee you life giving words because it depends on where their counsel's coming from and how devoted to the truth they are. So what does this mean for us? Right. If you keep listening, you can go apart from the Lord, not falling away in that sense, but you're going to feel far away. It's going to be hard for you to really discern what is of the Lord and what isn't. You're going to feel far away from your help and your discernment and all of the aid that you might need. Mm -hmm. How do you actually discern what to do when you have bad counsel and when you have those bad voices? Multiplying. Multiple, I mean, multiplication or, or actually addition and subtraction right <laughs> so all, all of that, math, all that like like, like you're moving math. up or moving down no right? absolutely right yes. and, and so it's and, and what's cool about that is you could subtract and it's good or you yeah. could subtract and it's bad right you could add and it's good or you could add and it's bad mm -hmm. well, you see this a lot with people who are like did you see the news today and like i watch this <laughs> i love my work guys but they're mm -hmm. all in the news and it's compounding yes. every day and it's like it's, it's like the negative is just increasing. Yes. I live there. I have lived there. <laughs> I know all about taking it in and consuming it. Mm -hmm. Social media and news and the negative talk and the negative this and the mm -hmm. negative that. Whether it's you being negative, someone else being negative, the world being negative. I mean, like all these negatives. But let me tell you, there's a way to stop this. Right. There is counsel. Ooh, there are spiritually nutritious tidbits mm -hmm. available to all of us yeah. taste and see that the Lord is good mm -hmm. taste so wisdom but where is this wisdom coming from you know we have to always remember where good wisdom and counsel comes from right uh, I love I, we were always like I mean we were always in the Proverbs uh, <laughs> I think we should go through it again maybe we should just study that together Proverbs <laughs> walk through it but uh I love Proverbs because it's it's like for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding Proverbs 2 6 everything that has spoken from God mm -hmm. is good okay to the subtraction right yeah hey maybe you shouldn't be looking this way you should or doing this thing you should take this away mm -hmm. because it's good and it's going to add to you right whereas if you reject it and you keep doing that negative thing well negative is going to add to you. There's my mm -hmm. add and subtract, right? Right, right. And so we, we see this throughout the bottom. So, you know, getting wisdom from God. Yeah. You know, me and Kalia were, she got a few candies out of a pinata the other day. And so we sat down and she had a few of the, like the little gummy lifesavers and there was a warhead and I knew she would not be a fan of a warhead. Those at, are those sour four. things, right? Yeah. And oh, yeah, they're okay. actually sweet after you get past the sour coating. There's a sermon in there as well, right? But, I just knew she wasn't going to be a fan. Right. And so she gave it to me. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <laughs> and as I'm opening it, because as a kid, you don't read the warnings on candy because right. what? And I don't know if there was a warning when I was a kid. I mm. feel like parents of my generation there make a stink about everything. No, there's some kind of writing. <laughs> I feel like parents of my generation make a stink about everything to the point where people have to add warnings just because you're not like parenting, right? But anyway, I digress. On here, it says warning, eating too many of these in a row can cause lack loss of taste, temporary loss of taste and sensitivity <laughs> for sensitive kids. And I was like, or sensitive tongues or something. And so pretty much if you eat too many of them at once, you're going to have trouble tasting right, right at right, least right, for right, a while. Right. So that's another way I see this as, you know, the verse taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm. There's some things that if you keep trying to stomach it for whatever reason, because you don't know better, because maybe you're trained to listen to that kind of voice or because you want to prove you're stronger than the voice. So you're going to let it stick around and you're still going to listen to it. Sometimes that can taint your ability mm. to taste real authentic things at least temporarily and so going to the word and praying to him you know mm. what do you do well one thing is you ask him for wisdom and understanding because right. it does say in his words that is his will for us and if you ask for wisdom he'll give it to you and then go to his word to pursue that wisdom don't ask for wisdom and then go be like i'm gonna learn 
biology today i mean you can if that's your thing but like you, i mean hey, let's, let's prioritize look, more people would study the bible for biology we wouldn't be where we're at today. agreed <laughs> i'm just saying start with the bible i think it was like galileo that said like you know the bible isn't for astronomy and right. i'm like the bible's for everything sit down and take eight seats galileo okay i'm sorry i don't care how smart you are and what you discovered don't say the bible ain't literally useful in every right. application but again, I digress. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts there's and opinions all, today. All <laughs> but but um, it's important for us to first pursue godly wisdom before we really get distracted with all of the other types. Mm, right. Otherwise, what you're doing right. is you're going after other things that then you have to figure out retroactively if they fit. Mm. Go after the Lord's word first so you understand some fundamentals. Ask him for wisdom and understanding of his word and his ways. That will allow you to then pursue other types of wisdom you have yet to pursue right. rather than adding to the list of things you have to retrofit to see if it aligns. You know, we already have enough stuff we know that we have to see if it aligns right. without adding more. Let's not, you know, procrastinate yeah, where it, true, like the, the truth that matters the most for later. Let's let's put that first and then go pursue everything else with a biblical application. A great example. I could sit here all day and beat myself up. I did this. I did this wrong. I did this. I did this. And God's like, okay, look, I got you. Mm -hmm. But I've restored you. I've redeemed you. I've, recti I've mm -hmm. rectified the problem. Now, why don't you turn to me, listen to who I tell you are, and look, now walk accordingly. Yeah. Right? I, it's, 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 it's so repetitive. It's so repetitive. Like, you're trying. Like, it just comes at us, like, nonstop mm -hmm. all the time. I don't know. No, I do know why the atmosphere is that. Because this is war. There are two kingdoms at war here. And right. we're like, not that we're necessarily caught in the middle, because I mean, I'm team Jesus, and so I'm sitting there going, well, I'm kingdom citizen, but I still have to endure. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting here in the middle of this battle of these two thrones, and one throne is like, I don't like that throne. I wanted that throne. That throne said, I can't be above him. I don't like him. So I'm not going to like anything that he creates, and I'm going to make it just miserable. Right. There, there, there it is. Inversion the of all truth. You're not, you're not edgy. <laughs> or brilliant for literally inverting the truth that's always been there and saying that's the new truth. Right. That's actually just really, really tacky plagiarism. Mm. And so we, we sit here. Yeah. Right? We sit here and we're like, oh. And I, and, and I, it, but, bom, 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 because <laughs> I don't have the button. <laughs> he gave us something awesome. Yes. He gave us something for those who believe in Jesus Christ. He has given us the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and dwelled inside of us. And I love Revelation as it breaks it down, right? Revelation is sitting there. It's like, it, it's talking about all the busted up churches. <laughs> so all the busted up people, okay? Like, but look, still the church. Busted up people, still the church. It, it's amazing. Like, to my church. Right. He doesn't, not like us today, and say, oh, that church down the street is flying this flag or that flag. And the other. No, that's not a church. That's a building with four walls. But what I'm saying here is he calls us his church, which means his people. And we're busted. And he's like, hold on a second, though. Hold on a second. Holy Spirit. I gave you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, he directs them right to the Holy Spirit. Like, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to his church. Are we listening? Hello. Hey, Holy Spirit, I'm having a rough day today. Where can you send me today to give me some encouragement, to build me up, to change my mind, to get me back on track? Because every time we see in Revelation that there is a listening to the Holy Spirit and overcoming, there's so many amazing things that happen. Mm -hmm. So many amazing. Look, I will give you, I will let you eat from the tree of life. What? By listening to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> right. Like, like change it up, right? Won't be hurt by the second death. Okay, right, right. Listen up, guys. Listen up. He'll give us hidden manna. Watch, a white stone with a new name. Because we're listening. We're overcoming. We're getting through it, right? He keeps, and, and what is it? He says, he overcomes and keeps my work until the end. To him, I will give power over the nations. Huh? What? You know what that means? Millennial kingdom. <laughs> <You're so funny. laughs> <laughs> right but i'm see but like it just keeps going in revelation 3 5 3 12 he keeps going through this and saying these are the things that happens when you overcome overcoming meaning what turning to him mm -hmm. listening right having an ear to hear yeah so that comes down to like in short what do you do right. i think i always like to say that there's advice that it, it works 
but it's simple, not easy. <laughs> it's simple in that it's not going to take you more than one post-it note to write it down, but it is going to take some moxie, some maturity, some courage to actually do it because it is easier sometimes to lay down and let people kick you right. than it is to get up and find a way out. So that saying, right. when it's verbal onslaught, when it's your own voice, when it's the world's voices, when it's a, a single other person's voice, when it's many other people's voices, when it's a demon, right? No matter what the voice is that's mm. coming your way that's a lie, sometimes it's easier to just pretend you're powerless and keep listening and keep begging for help rather than accept help when it's offered mm. because sometimes that help requires some personal responsibility and some hard times too. They're just different hard times. Mm. So yes. you have the, 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 the brief points of boom, boom, uh, boom. Just real quick, shut it down and open it up. Right. That's, that's it. Shut it down. Open up. So shut up what or shut what down? <laughs> shut what down? <laughs> shut him, the voices, and everything that's coming against you down. down. You don't have to lay there paralyzed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're allowed to say silence. <laughs> One day we'll talk about that Jesus laying name. paralyzed. <laughs> I think we've talked about it. But yes. <laughs> and then open it up. Open up the word of God. Yes. Hear what God has to say. Hear what the spirit is saying his church amen amen so that's what you need to do if you need help that's why you can also pray for that wisdom that understanding that strength and for godly friends mm. to come around you and help you shut it down and open it up amen all right so remember you can go do jesus not junk food the devotional it's free it's seven days and it is at our website thepantrypodcast.com you can also support us on patreon.com and for free you can hit that like button and subscribe so until next time bye, bye.